Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Manuri nguru Hamla la la mane Uri nguru Shaka da ba da da de Za kuhima Za Numu kawaira Raka ba di akale Uri nguru Lift your hands and let us fall in love with God Hey Vencing my soul Vencing my soul My soul we are God to thee. You're a sweetheart, God. How great thou art. It doesn't matter. How great oh, thou art. I fall in love. Fall in love. I don't know if you're falling in love with the Lord. I am. I don't know what to do with God, but lift your hands and let us fall in love. If you can't close How your eyes. How great thou art. Rush. How great thou art. Wange buri wendo osa kuvye watonda no mukono go ay 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 zenda ba e munyenye no kuwa tuka shadida baba amani go galabi ka everywhere. Diseases will heal. Diseases will heal. Diseases will heal in this instant. Everything written about you is great. I don't know if you have anything in your heart that you can tell God by yourself. Like, just lift your hands and say something that you know you've never told any person. Don't say a prayer. Tell him a love romantic matter. Tell God something you've never told any lover in the world. Right this morning. Lift your hands and tell him. Let your mouth say something sacred. Let your mouth say something holy to God. Lovely. Gabari Lenama. Oh. Say something. Say something. You love me. <laughs> oh. Completely. Oh, I love you too. I love you with everything I have. I love you with all my life. Shama, mama, la, 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 la. 
I wish you could lift your hands and just fall in love with this sweet girl. Meralita Kalio, Esabe Mama Kabadi Leko, the one who is holy. In him there is no shadow of turning. With everything, with everything, I love you. With everything, in everything of me, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Holy, when I got a okuwe, ela holy, yes. Holy, when I got a okuwe, ela holy, yes. Lift your hands one more time. Just lift your hands, everybody. I don't know if you can lift your hands and wave them all together. If your mouth can say these words, keep saying holy. Just repeatedly. Just put holy on your mouth and just speak it on the pace of the arms that you're waving. Come on, everybody. The Bible says the 24 elders bow there in the front of God and they cast their crowns on the ground. The Bible says even the four living creatures, they keep saying, holy, holy. If you can keep waving those hands and just tell him he's holy, just to, hey, say, I, hey, I, who can see you and stay alive? Oh. <laughs> you is full of beauty. In you there's no error at all. Oh. I, 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 I. There's no darkness with you. You chose and chose to love me. From the foundations of the world, your beauty is unbearable. In you, there's no shadow. You dwell in the light that we cannot approach at all. I enter in me, God. How wonderful! How wonderful, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. how beautiful you are. You supersede beauty. You supersede good smiles. You supersede gold and silver and uranium. You supersede the beauty of the stars. You supersede the beauty of the firmament. You supersede the sign, the shine of the light. Everybody, I call a seat. I, 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 lift your hands and let us fall in love. Ela Paliani, Eshael Alani, ay 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 ay, we are, we are your lovers, we are your lovers, we are your lovers, we are your love, Eshabiali, ay 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 ay, Ora la 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 ba she na ma de de be de 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 be ya na ya, Ora, ay 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 ay. Lift your hands and let us fall in love. Shatelele, aye, aye, ala da 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 ni lo sona de, aye, aye, esha da 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 barina de, aye, aye. You fell in love 
love with me I didn't deserve I, I, You love me unconditionally Shut up I, I, You've given me the life I couldn't get I, I, You're sweeter than my mom and my dad Oh, rapapata kata taliate Open your mouth and speak to God Shamela kai Mutima kwange Kwe maso kange Tunulira katonda manyi kange Shama ndeke Kwe mubili kwange Mwele senga Bana vange Haya bata Ena kuzange Kunzi Sizo mukama wange Esha da 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 lele Saya Otakaye kama Tualo mutima kwange Shaye O mutima kwange Kuko Mutima kwange Ya kola sinakai Embra sinabala kwa Ya 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 O mutima kwange Ya 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 Bali changa tugeze, bali manya Titwa kumanya Bali changa tugeze, bali raba Evi kele vya fe Mwetu atamuranga Ngatu kunonya Ayala varade tira Ena kuza fe Tatali atatatati lora tekebada Wetu wanga atetu kunonye Tutwarenga uchari Esha daga badi ya kaba Kela takatane Eranda daga ena Oshaya Eranda daya Open your mouth and say something to God Ela takane Yako le madeba ye Imbraza kabane Aya aya Havana Vange Bakuna Venga Muli Kuma Chakwe Havana Vange Ye Kwe Musika Ye Akabataka You're the inheritance of my children Shana Male Debera You're the inheritance of my days Shanda Kabala Kaye Ye Kale Brakatani Atay Ye 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 Oyamba gomu kolo kwame Kusi tukenga mumazima Oyamba gomu tima kwange Utamule nga mkutia Oyamba nga maso kange Gatunule nga kwe choraka Oyamba nge mikele miange Sigarenga muma kuwa go Ay, ay, ay Hele, baba If you can lift your hands one last time, I promise Mena hika hiko Pakora like sida pale Urate la mai If I see you, I will die Moses saw you and he died. Ay 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 ay, rata kabaka. Yes, Paul saw you and he died. He said, "I've been crucified with my Lord. Oh, I no longer live. Oh God, I want to die." Shade nada makaye. I know that my life is in your death. Shadiata akambra zata kani atola. My life is in your death. Oh, I don't know if you came for the Lord, but in case you did, lift your hands and close your mouth and focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
ai 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 a cadeira ai a cobeira nada ai a a cacado saca crucify us for the sake of a generation Lord will you kill us for the sake of our children ai ai Lift your hands if you can. Let us. Ay, ay, ay. I will lift my eyes Lord, I gave my heart your possession When we don't deserve, take us still, God. Your rich in mercy. We've never deserved. Never been right enough to qualify. We couldn't go up, so you came down. We couldn't be saved, so you had to die. Couldn't be clean, so you have to shed your blood. I, 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 I can see the love you have. That's why you cannot leave me. I don't want to cry like you didn't satisfy. I don't want to die, God, like you didn't die. I don't want to live like I didn't see your light. Hey, I, 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 I don't want to cry like I never saw your grace. Shadi, di, 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 lift your hand, let us fall in love with God. We were useless, you came. We were dead, you came. We were of no help at all, and you came. We didn't have where to go, and you came. To our way. What other hope do I have apart from you? See your face The loveliest face I see your face Your majesty Your majesty my king I see your face
hawa nabi I want to kiss your feet and me where you are Where you are I want to stay I want to kiss your feet and me where you are Where you are I want to be I want to kiss your feet and me beside your throne I, 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 where you are I want to be I want to kiss your feet and stay down your feet Hungry we are for you Move and touch, leave no room Where you are Just let me in, I be I want to kiss those feet and stay Where you are Where you are Just let me in, I beg oh. I want to kiss your feet and me where you are, where you are. I want to stay. I want to kiss your feet and me where you are. Diseases are fleeing right now. Bodies are healing. From the crown of your heads to the soles of your feet. I see a cleansing like a scar. God is healing men right now. Of any disease it is. Lungs are released. Spleens are released. Ulcers are going. Peptic. Where you are. Is where I am. Just let me kiss your feet and stay where you are. Hungry I am for you. Hungry we are for you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for loving us too, man. Lift your hands and clap them for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor on the left and on the right and tell him welcome to the presence of the Lord. Quiet. Thank you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome a few people and tell them you're welcome to the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're sick in your body, I want you to put your hand where the pain is. God is healing men now. Just put your hand. Healing is happening right now. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing a funny vision. I just want you to help me. Uh, somebody bought, somebody, somebody bought uh, a packet of razor blades in the morning. And you put them in your bag and just a few minutes later you couldn't find them. I want to see that person. In the morning, you bought a packet of razor blades and you put them around your, I think one of your bag pouches. I hope I'm seeing right. And then you look for them later on and you couldn't find them. Who is that person? Where you are I want to be Alright, I'll know later. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Today, I want to teach you how to hear God. And so, if you don't hear God after today, there's a problem with you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord gives me the grace to be so quick. 
but I want to teach us how to hear God. So, the next time that you want to get a message for yourself, from God, personally, you won't have to struggle, you won't have to look for a prophet. So, it's a, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a, a very, very fundamental element that everybody here has God, especially if you're a child of God. Somebody say amen. Now, the chance I see by the Spirit, I know by the Spirit, I understand by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I wanted to look intently. There's something before I even begin. What's up with the screens? I used one. Why? Okay. Now, there's something that I want to firstly, before I begin, there's something I want to kill first as a suckered cow. There's a mentality, a thought. It's a suggestive thought. It's not doctrinally right. It's not theologically correct. It's not even an exegesis. It's a suggestion that by religion. And I want to get it out of your mind and spirit. Because that mind, that thing gives you independence to hear God with boldness. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, if you asked everybody right now, those people who do not understand how to hear God, or how to tune into the frequencies of God, and how to understand when God has spoken, many of them feel they don't qualify. Why don't you hear God? Somebody tells you, uh, I, I, I don't qualify. Why? Some of them think they are too sinful. You get what I'm saying? Or some of them think they did something last night so God is angry. It's as if like when God gets angry, he gets mute. Are you getting what I'm saying? So let me ask you something. All of you understand that anybody that has lived in the Old Testament, you are supposed to be 10 times better. Is that the truth? Not 10 times, like very many times. The Bible says that the Old Testament had an error. Right? The Bible says, for if there was no error in the Old Testament, there was no need to seek for a new. It means that the Old Testament was erroneous. Now, anybody who lived by the Old Testament or under the Old Testament lived by an inferior covenant than you. Now, we have been given the most perfect covenant. The most perfect covenant. And because we've been given the most perfect covenant, are you getting what I'm saying? Because we've been given the most perfect covenant, you are supposed to live a thousand skillion times better than everybody that has lived in the Old Testament. You have more rights. You have more access. You have more accuracy. You have more everything. Jesus displays it so vividly and says in Matthew 11, 11, he says, I tell you, and you realize that every time you're reading scripture, everywhere you see the word verily, verily. You get what I'm saying? Verily, verily. Look, it proves two things. One, that Jesus is not a man of God. You get? How do you know that every prophet behind Jesus, they say it, thus saith the Lord. You get it? But for Jesus, he never said, thus saith the Lord. Why? Because he's the Lord that says. You get what I'm saying? Now this one tells you he's not a prophet. Neither is he an apostle. Yes, I understand that, 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 that the Samaritan woman called, them, called him a, a prophet and Paul called him an apostle of our faith. Yes, but when the, the, the Bible says all prophets prophesied unto John. Right? Now when he was come, when Jesus was come, when he was come, are you hearing what I'm saying? When he was come, uh, Jesus came as God in flesh. So he doesn't say, thus saith the Lord. No. He says, verily, verily, I say. That's number one. And number two, it shows that this is an infallible truth. I want you to understand. It's an infallible truth. Infallibility means this is a truth that is way ancient and cannot you cannot have something deeper than it. I hope you guys are getting it. If you get me, say an amen. Look, let me explain it better. There are truths 
that when they are preached, another man can go deeper than it. You get what I'm saying? It's a truth, but it's not an infallible truth. It doesn't carry infallibility. And another man can come and go deeper than it. For example, the things I preach right now, they are really deep. But the next generation, there's a generation that is going to come and they will listen to me and they're like, wow. They were deep, but they were babies. You get what I'm saying? Some men that are coming, if the Lord has not yet come, they will hear us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Some men that are coming, they will hear us and they will say, wow, they tried. But in our generation, we are really deep men. Why? Because men who come later on, it's, the gl it's glory to glory. But there are truths that cannot be, there are truths that can't be changed. So when you see Jesus saying, verily, verily, I say, he's saying this truth, no one can go deeper. For example, let me show you that men went deeper in truth. In the day of Moses, Moses says if you sin, huh, that God will punish you and punish your child and punish your child, child because God is jealous. That's Moses. When later on, Ezekiel came, what did he say? He said, no man shall eat a bitter fruit and cause another to have, you get what I'm saying? To have pain in the teeth. He said, whatsoever soul shall sin, shall die. Now, that's a man speaking deeper truth than Moses. Because some of you think, you've seen like those atheists who read the Bible, because they don't carry the spirit of interpretation, some things which differ from other things, they say they are contradictory. The Bible is a contradictory book. No. When a truth is kind of different from another truth, it's just that this truth is shallower than this. It's like if I preach on a subject and another man comes and preaches and it's kind of different. No. The, us can see which one is deeper than the other. It's not different. It's just deeper. You, you get what I'm saying? So depth is different from difference. But indifference calls depth difference. Yeah. If you got it, say amen. So, now, Ezekiel comes and says, no man shall sin and cause another sin. Like, no son shall pay for his father's sin. Right? You've seen uh, 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 Jeremiah in his lamentation of seven. Saying, our father have sinned and we are carrying the luggages of their sins. And there are men preaching these things in this generation. Because they don't understand what truth is. So you find some people in a church service, somebody saying, Saba, we kutuleko, ebya jajawo. And people are frustrated like, Jaja Cheyakoda, Chimvako, you get it. Ah. And you spend one hour in prayer. And you, it's because it was a truth in the generation and the dispensation of Jeremiah and Moses. When Ezekiel came, he said, if a son sins, he shall pay. If a father sins, he shall pay. Nobody shall pay for anybody's sin. You get what I'm saying? But now, when Paul came, what did he say? He says, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And he says, but have been freely justified. Now, the revelation of Moses was true in his dispensation. He said, if you sin, I will punish you, punish your child and punish your child's child. In the generation of Ezekiel, he says, if you sin, I will punish you alone. In the generation of Paul, he said, if you sin, I will punish myself. So now, Jesus punished himself for our sin. The death was supposed to die, he died. The bleeding was supposed to bleed, he bled. The death was supposed to die, he died. The cross was supposed to carry, he carried. The hell we were supposed to go, he went. That's why men who shall go to hell in this generation shall really be punished. So bad. Because they won't go to hell because they did bad. No, they will go to hell because they rejected the son of God. You say that and you hear like, 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 like a sword just pierced your heart. Like Jesus did all these things and he came and then somebody hears and says nonsense. You get what I'm saying? That if men go to hell in our dispensation or in the dispensation of the post cross I, with the blood that was shed I saw a doctor last night who was giving an explanation of how Jesus was killed. The man said he needs 10 minutes to, to explain and on the second minute, he cried and fainted. He just was talking about this nail of here. And he cried and fainted. He was explaining the pain. He called it excruciating pain. He said, no, 
expression is it's, it's not it's not it's not enough and it's not a word enough he said i am imagining by imagining the pain the man went through he said understanding this simply says the price of a cross the guy cried and fell are you getting what i'm saying do you get what i'm saying so if a man goes to hell <laughs> really why why it's like when somebody pays for you in a restaurant to eat for the whole year and you come and you still pay yet you know he paid that's pride going to hell is pride it's true going to hell is what pride that's why never tell him don't go If you got me, say an amen. So, when you see Jesus saying, verily, verily, I say unto you, he's saying, there's nobody who can go deeper than this truth. I am bottomless, but this one is from the bottomless, bottomless. The bottom of the bottomlessness. Did you get it? So now he says in Matthew 11, 11, he says, verily, I say unto you, that no man that has been born of a woman has raised greater than John the Baptist. That if anybody that has been born of a woman, he is less than John the Baptist. John the Baptist is greater than everybody. Greater than Moses, greater than Ezekiel, greater than Abraham, greater than all of those guys. But then he says, but notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He's saying the guy who got born again this morning is greater than the one who is greater than all of the guys that were in the Old Testament. Did you get what I just said? He's saying all of the guys that just got born again today the list in the kingdom. You get the list? Because we rise by knowledge and revelation. Now the one who knows nothing, an infant of the spirit, is greater than John. Yet John is greater than all. Now, are you getting what I'm saying? This one simply means that everybody that is, that is, that is, that is behind John in the Old Testament, are, are you getting what I'm saying? Everybody lived in a covenant which is completely inferior. Yet, if those guys had God, you should have no excuse. So now, let me ask you, before I even teach you anything, because there are five dimensions, according to me, according to my experience, because I don't teach things which are not my revelation. Are you getting what I'm saying? I don't copy to teach. I teach as revealed to me. Now, according to me, there are five dimensions of the voice of God. And I, I of course, want to teach you three. The rest of the two I will teach ministers next week. On Monday and Tuesday. Because if I was to teach five, we would sleep here. But now, this one I want to, the Zakat cow I want to slaughter first. Somebody who says, I have done this so God won't speak to me. It's pride. I think I'm not hearing God because last night I abused someone. Last night I stole. Did you get what I say? Now let me ask you. All of you remember that in the Garden of Eden, God's God, God, God told these guys, don't touch that tree, right? And the guys did what? They didn't just touch, they ate. And all of you know that we are preaching today because some guy ate. That is one of the most treacherous sins that have ever been done. But right after these men had done what they had done, they fell, right? And then right after falling, God spoke and they had, and they still spoke back. Yet these are men in the inferior covenant. God came and, and they were not deaf to the voice of God. No. He says, where are you? They said, we are here. What are you doing? He says, we are afraid. He, he spoke and they spoke back. They heard God clearly after falling. Another man killed a man of God and while he was still on the altar, after killing a man of God for worshipping well. Killed a man of God. The Bible says, Cain got angry and killed Abel for worshipping his God. And right, right after he had killed the man of God, God spoke and the guy had. And the guy was speaking to God so, so angrily. Huh? God asked him, where is your brother? The guy says, so, you, am I my brother's keeper? Can you imagine this guy was hearing God and talking back to God the wrong way, yet God was still speaking back. A conversation between God and a fallen man. A man who has just committed murder. And shed innocent blood. The Bible says there are seven. There are four things that the Lord, the Lord hates, right? Is this four or six? Seven, seven, right? And so, what does he say? The first, he says, uh, lofty look, pride look. Then there are those who, who who make haste to shed innocent blood. 
like one of those things that he hates. He says there are seven things that God cannot withstand. If a man sheds innocent blood. Yet right after a man has shed innocent blood, God spoke to him. And he had. Every time God speaks to you, he's giving room for redemption. Because the voice of God is revelation. And revelation, the Bible says, the revealed things belong to us and to our children forever. It means every time God gives a voice to a man, whether sinful, he has come to redeem. But some people are too indifferent to catch the voice of God. If you got me saying amen. So Cain had God. Somebody is saying, Cain did not have the blood, right? He didn't have the blood of Jesus Christ. Neither did Adam. Yet they heard God and they spoke back and forth and he had them. So I'm trying to tell you that you, it's just a funny excuse of pride when you say, I, I sinned and God, that's why God didn't speak to me. Listen, sin disturbs relations, yes, but it doesn't mute God. Did you get what I just said? So it's an error for somebody to say, uh, God speaks to the other guy, he didn't speak to me. No, say that God speaks to both of us, but I'm deaf. Or, God speaks to all of us, but I'm not skilled enough to capture the recordings of his voice. Somebody say, I get it. Now, there are five dimensions of the voice of God, and I want to teach from the first as they, as revealed to me, and so we can keep going. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The first dimension of the voice of God is what I call the eternal recordings. The eternal recordings. The eternal recordings. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say, the eternal recordings. Now, the headings or the names I'm giving you are names that I named. You get what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? According to my study and research. So you can understand as I understand. Now, the, the eternal codings, this is what I mean. The Bible says all scripture is God-breathed, right? And it's applicable for doctrine, extortion, encouragement, rebuke in love. It means if God has spoken something, it is eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether he spoke to him or he spoke to her, as long as it came out of the mouth of the eternal monarch of Zion, that thing is not time bound. It's timeless. And so if a man is born 1,000 years later, he still can capture and tap into the voice of the of, of, that God spoke to a man who lived 1,000 years ago. And it's the same voice and it is doing the very same thing. Did you get what I just said? Let me give you an example. About five years ago, I was doing prophetic meeting. Just gather people and prophesy and let them go. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? And so we were in Bali and we were doing a, 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 a prophetic meeting. And we're in a place called Budaka Deliverance Church. The man of God was called Bishop Shiny. And as I'm speaking, large church, I said there's a young lady here who has a, a, a red top, black skirt, has white shoes, and you have socks that have yellow and black in them. Are you getting what I'm saying? And I said, come forward. There's a healing that is happening around your belly. She had something to do with Ania. Praise the Lord. Why are you turning? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is what happened. The lady comes from the back and she comes and as she's coming, the power of God hits her and the tumor disappears. Now, this is what happened. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, I had a friend called Henry. Bacab. He captures that video. Then later on, I think after one year, Henry goes to Dubai and just recently about about three weeks ago this guy is going through his tab and he lands on that video which is about five years old and he posts it on his whatsapp status and when he posts it on his whatsapp status are you getting what i'm saying a woman calls him after about five hours and tells him the pastor that you put on your status was speaking to me. I was putting on red, black, white, and socks with yellow and black. And I had a tumor on my right. And it disappeared. Now, this is my question. This is my question. Did I give that prophetic word to that woman? No. I gave it to a woman who actually got healed. After five years, I don't know what kind of divine arrangement that was. 
But this man, by divine arrangement, put this, I don't know why he put it on his status. And I don't know why the day he put it on his status, a woman was dressed as he was dressed. Now this one should tell you that the reason why you chose to dress the way you are dressed, sometimes. Sometimes you think you are thinking, yet you are under some spirit. You get what I'm saying? Because even dressing is spiritual. Colors are spiritual. And so, yes. Yes. Did you read that in 1940, about six, William Branham prophesied the kind of cloth that Kamala would be putting on at the swearing in? Didn't he, didn't he even say the very colors? And this very many years ago, that, that it's spiritual to dress the way you're dressed. There's something in the heavenlies that, you get what I'm saying? And the woman got delivered. I'm trying to say that the first realm of the voice of God is the eternal codex. That a man can read what God said to Jeremiah and is applied in his very time and it works because it carries the very same power. If you get me, say an amen. That's where scripture has power. That's where scripture gets eternal ordinance. That a man can simply look to scripture and look for a voice. Did you get what I just said? That you get scripture like this and you just read it and you say, what is God saying? What is God saying? And you read something and it is applying to your very situation. Did you get what I just said? It's, it's applying to your very situation. Now, this one should not be religionalized as I'm speaking. Because I was hearing a certain man of God that said something funny recently. And he said everybody has something they call a life scripture. But the way to find that life scripture is that he's finding it by your birth date. You get it? Like if you're born in 1995, you go to Joshua verse nine, chapter 19, verse 95. But does, does do, do what? Now like the book of Jude has one chapter. The book of Philemon has one chapter. Are you getting what I'm saying? But how many, how many books have 95 verses? So these things can only apply to the people who are born in 1911. You get what I'm saying? Even Psalms doesn't, doesn't have those, those verses in every, in every chapter. So now, 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 now I know a, a gentleman, I think she was called Clark who? Some American guy. Who had that gentleman preaching and he went and he searched for a scripture and his scripture in the book of Joshua. Is it the book of Joshua Ecclesiastes? You get what I'm saying? The book, the verse was saying and they gathered women to themselves and drank themselves stupid. And he said, ah, this is my destiny. Me, I'm going to gather and drink because God has said that if you find that scripture, God has what? Spoken. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. The whole word is your word. The whole word is your word. If it's an eternal cord, it is your word. I know some of you who they told, ah, God doesn't speak to people anymore. You just get your Bible and you say, where I turn, it's my word. Wah. And I tried those things many years ago. I was in fasting. Like I turned it like this and it says, you are cast with a cast. <laughs> sure. And if you're not, if you're funny, you would take the word. Listen, because people tell you such things. No, God is not a magician. Get those things. Like he just opened a qua. And then he said, I will cast your whole house. Ah! You open it up and it says Mephibosheth was lame in the both legs. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You open it up and it says Judas hanged himself. Now, <laughs> now be careful. <laughs> if you're going to read the word, read the word as is. Somebody say amen. But what I'm saying is that the voice, the first dimension of the voice of God is the eternal God. That when you, the, what God said to Abraham, he can say to you. You get what I'm saying? What God said Abraham. That's the first dimension. That's what I'm trying to say. That it is wrong for men to want to hear God in fifth dimension when they did not even hear him in first dimension. Like those of you who want to hear God speaking rema, like right now, to whisper to your ear when you don't know the word. Because if that happens, God can do. But can you differentiate between a familiar spirit and God? Because it's only the word that brings discernment in a man's spirit. And if the man has not learned how to discern, the devil, the Bible says, it's not a marvel that he transforms himself even as an angel of light. 
and his ministers and ministers of righteousness. Why do false prophets have people in their churches? Because men are not full of the word they can't discern. And they also think that discernment is a gift, like a gift of prophecy. No, discernment is a fruit of, full, of being filled with the word. Now somebody says, how can I design a false prophet? Do you know the word? Because the Bible says it reveals the intents of man. That if a man is lying, if you are full of the word, you will open his heart and you will know that's a lie. But you don't want to read, but you want to know what the readers know. Go like you don't want to go to school, but you want to graduate. What's it? If you're not a reader of the word, if you're not a student, a disciple of the word, certain things you will just forget. They will always hear God for you. If they lie, you're paying for ignorance. Yes. I went to a church and I ha- when I entered, I, you know when you enter a church and people are all standing? They're like this, eh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. They're jumping, you realize, wow, the man of God is fire. Then this church, when I entered, I don't know the fire that... <laughs> The man of God says, Mokama wa gamba, ntito no siwa kuhonsi, jina siwa mungulu. Abata yogeda nawe. Ayogeda ne pasta wo. Pasta wo ya kusibida ilana kusumulu. And I'm like, eh? So gendo le ten sigo. Tugenda kwa ya ne service, majitaru wasa mainja. Wow. And I'm like, mainja kafu. You get what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? So these guys are all going to gather money and bring it in envelopes because the man of God has been told by God that these guys can't solve their problems. Do you know what the word can do to a man? Do you know what the word can do to a man? Do you know if a man just speak the voice of God from Logos, the written word, do you know what it can do to him? Do you know that certain chains break without prayer? A man just needs to get a true revelation of one thing and he hears God. And certain chains will break off completely. Completely. Hallelujah. Do you get what I'm saying? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know who delivered me from anger. I don't know. I was a very angry man. You ask Edwin or Dorothy. Very angry. Very. I'm talking about the spirit of destruction. That demon. You know, like some of you, like how some of you are. I was. Like you get angry and you bite the window. Like, <laughs> you know, you bite the glass and you swallow it. <laughs> I'm talking about that kind of anger. When you get angry and you hit a wall and you're the one bleeding and you think now you're catching attention. It's a demon. I don't know how that thing left me. Nobody laid hands on me, no. And I was always afraid something might happen when I'm... It's a demon. You know when you know I am... God help me that where we are going to a party, somebody shouldn't get me angry. Because when I get angry, I can't control myself. I will kill a person. And some of you are like that. Me, even at home, they know me. When I get angry, I get these things of Christianity. I put them down. I beat you, brew brack. Then I come back and put it on. <laughs> you need deliverance. And listen, there are Two, there are things that cannot be delivered by laying on of hands. You get what I'm saying? And some addictions also. It's either the secret place or the word. Because you see, this word has power. Inherent. The message Bible says they need help. Like if a man feeds on it, you might not know. Like those days I would be, I, would be, I was an addict of the word. People would call me a certain name that I can't say because I was always like this in scripture. We, I didn't have fun. And you read Leviticus and it is boring. Yet me after reading, I'll just read. Let me just read it, whatever way. You read Revelation and ah, you, you get like you go to, to Leviticus and they say, and then they got a lamb and the lamb, they put it on the altar. Then the altar and then they gave names of villages. You get it? It gives names of a full nation and you're like, what does this help me? Is this scripture or it was just Moses' conversation? Until these things are, until you're, until you're full of these things, and one day you realize you defeated a demon because of Leviticus that you read. Until certain things begin to die in you, and you did not know actually Leviticus was helpful. But when you're reading it, like some of you say, "Me, I read the word and I don't understand it." Don't worry, read. Yes, don't worry, just it. Everybody of you has a certain place you get to, and the word is boring. And then you say, Father, Holy Spirit, reveal this to me. You read, and it doesn't. 
Then you say, Lord Jesus, what is this saying? Reveal to me. In the name of Jesus. And the father said, what does this mean? But you don't know that when you read it again and again and again and again, your conscience is capturing a, a voice. And that there's a certain day when revelation will be sweeping off your conscience like this. You get what I'm saying? That's how these things work. Now, I'm talking to you, those of you who read the word and it is boring. Don't worry, just eat it. It's like if you're drinking aloe vera, you know that malaria will go. It is not sweet though, but drink. Like Rolloquin. The word is like that. It becomes like sweet as a honeycomb when it, you have filled it up. You get what I'm saying? And now you begin to get an, to become an addict. You don't want to leave. Like, like me when I'm reading. I, you get what I'm saying? You read and you can't sit down. You, and it blows you like, Whoa! you were reading the word. But the other time when I would be reading the word, I would be like, let me just read. I don't know what spirit was on me. You read and it's boring and you read. So the first dimension of the voice of God is when a man, are you getting what I'm saying? Is the eternal codings. When God speaks, this thing beats time. He's alpha omega. See, when you read it in the original Greek, in Revelation, it doesn't say, I am alpha and omega. No. He says, I am alpha omega. And this means I am at the beginning and at the end at the same time. You get what I'm saying? See, when, he, when I speak here, I speak to the ones who are at the end and the ones who are at the beginning and the ones who are not yet at the end. So if the one at the end hears and the one at the beginning hears, they just need to receive it as theirs. That when you read the word, you just need to, every time you see a name there, you put your name. That's the first dimension of the voice of God. That when God says, and in blessing, I will bless you, Abraham. You tell yourself, and in blessing, I will bless you, Judah. You pause and you go, you... You walk around, you're like, he will bless me. What is God? Oh my God. You go again and you're like, in blessing. I, oh my God. God. You get what I'm saying? And it says, in Zion, there shall not be a one that shall lack her mate. You hold it and you're like, oh, wait a minute. You mean I'm getting married? You get, well, there's nobody to shock you. You shock yourself. And that's how it works. If you don't shock yourself, you will remain unshockable. And you do not know that one of the ways the word of God gets indoctrinated into your spirit, it's creating a wonder. You know what I'm saying? Because some of you don't sell her. You don't imagine. You don't ponder. You don't perspire. You don't, you, you're like a tree. You look at it, it looks at you. You look at it, you go home. This word can't work. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. How can you not think about something? How can, no, how can you not be shocked? For example, how can you not be shocked that that the guy was swallowed by a fish. And he writes and he says he was in Shoel, in hell. And the Bible says the bellows of the Lord and the, and the floods of the Lord surrounded him. How can you read that and you're like, eh, you're na bambi. Oui. How can you read such a thing and you get, ah, wona, yona, chenyanja chamida. And for you, you're the one meeting the chenyanja. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For you, when, when you are done reading Yona has been swallowed, you go and swallow fish. You don't even sell her. You don't want to think. And then later on, how can you not know that God is saying something? To you personally, to you individually. When you read a scripture, ooh, ask yourself, what is he saying to me? And whatever you think he is saying, just write it. Because some of you say, I want to hear God. And then you go to the presence and you don't have a pen, you don't have a book. Wait, God is so fast. Your mind is too slow. Have you not realized that sometimes you get revelations and when revelations hit you, your mind takes five years to, to reconcile with what God says five years ago. Sometimes God tells you do this. And when you just speak it, you begin to celebrally digest it and it doesn't count. And you just say, you know what? Let me just do it because God said. Are you getting what I'm saying? And now, when you begin to do it. You wait for your mind to understand and it doesn't. And it takes you about 10 years sometimes. It takes you about 10 years. Like when God tells you do this and you look around and there's totally nothing that responds. Did you get what I just said? Like God tells Abraham you're going to be a father of nations and the guy has not even had one child. How do you even speak that? 
how do you speak it to other people like like imagine abraham was a preacher he stands to church in church and the people he's speaking to everybody has a child and it's now 25 years after the people who got married with sarah they have their children are getting married and sarah does not has not yet given birth and 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 the, the old guy is saying god is going to make me father of all nations including you people don't people laugh did you get what i just said but does in israel come from such a man because the mind is a very slow technology if you try to relate with the mind by the spirit uh, the spirit is too quick that's why if you enter the prince of the lord like those of you who value the voice of god really really because some of you say god speak to me oh lord and then you listen with your ears <laughs> like you think god is a radio and then nothing comes to you then something knocks on the door that told you is, it, is that him Kui, <laughs> you think god speaks to you your canals how can you enter the presence and you are ready for God to speak to you and you don't go with a pen and a paper? How? 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 How can you do that? You can't. If you really want God to speak to you, just know that if he speaks, listen, do you know that God can speak to you something that will that takes five seconds and it's going to redeem 20 years? Because some of you think that he has to talk to speak. No. He doesn't have to talk to speak. No. He's a spirit. And speech to spirit is not given to the mouth. I'm not sure they have teeth. Pronunciation would be a problem. He doesn't have to talk to communicate. How many of you have had dreams and somebody did not speak but you knew what he meant? Really? You don't know what I'm talking about? You were in a dream and you know this person didn't speak but you, they spoke they communicated. That's spiritual intelligence. God doesn't have to speak to you. No. I mean, he doesn't have to put out a voice. No. Did you get what I just said? So, so the first, the first dimension of the voice is the eternal coding. It's those, those voices, those informations, those intelligences you, you squeeze out of scripture. You squeeze out of scripture. That's why it is important that you read the Bible every day. Unless if for you, you are so intelligent enough and you don't need to hear God about every day. For you, you can do whatever you want. But those of you who know that God, the voice of God is as important as every hour, you will do well. Because, because that's how men redeem time. If you don't know. Because if you hear God every morning, you realize that you can do in a day what other men sh sh what shall take other men 10 years yes but i mean for you if you're intelligent enough you can go by your schedule <laughs> business as usual go open up your shop enter wait for customers sometimes god will tell you close your shop and he will tell you go and sit at city square yes i know what i'm talking about <laughs> God will tell you go and park at a certain petrol station and you want to leave and you can't leave. And then somebody just walks into the car. And something blows your mind. Some things I can't say. So it's wise that every day you hear God. It's wise that every day you hear God. It's very important. It's very important because most of you are erring in life. Most of you are erring in life. The second dimension of, 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 of the voice of God, I call it sealed instruction. Speak with me. You know what it means to seal? Let me first show you this thing. If you look at Job chapter 14, chapter 33 verse 14. Let's do chapter 33 verse 14. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that scripture. If you look at Job chapter 33 verse 14, there are people that the Lord told me to pray for. I, I ask that you don't go before I finish. If you're the one you know that I'm doing to you. For, praise the Lord. Look at this. For God speaks once, yeah, twice. Yet a man perceiveth it not. This one, this one says God speaks time and again. Give me HCSB. Now, HCSB he says, God speaks time and again. 
yet a person doesn't notice it. So because the man doesn't hear God, it doesn't mean God doesn't speak. It simply means the man does not understand that he spoke. He doesn't know how to separate the voice of God from his conscience, from the voice of the world, from the voice of the flesh, from the voice of the devil. So God keeps speaking. The Bible says God speaks time and again, but a man doesn't notice it. Now let me show you how these things work. work. God keeps speaking to you. He's giving you an instruction over certain things. You get what I'm saying? Hallelujah. For example, you woke up and uh, you have, for example, 100 million, right? And you want to begin a business and you realize you don't have adequate knowledge about the business you're going to, speak, to begin. And then you, all of a sudden, fall into an idea which you don't know where you got it from. You say, let me work with this brother. You get? And God in his infinite wisdom knows that this brother will break you. You will fall into trouble with this guy. And then God, while you are awake, he says, don't work with that guy again. And you don't what? You don't notice it. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm showing you how the voice of God works. He says again, don't work with that guy. You don't notice. Don't marry that, that woman. You don't notice. Don't marry that brother. You don't notice. And he keeps speaking, don't do it. Do this, do that, do this, do that. And while you are awake, you don't notice. Why? Because there are certain 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 imaginations that you have planted in, in your in your mind against the voice of God. Some of you, you say you are too sinful to hear God. Some of you, you say you are too immature in the spirit to hear God. Some of you, you say that your prophet hears God for you. Some of you, you think you, are not, you have not qualified yet. And so these are all things that you have planted in your, they are strongholds in your mind. You have planted them and so when the voice of God comes, it hits on such walls of your imagination. That's what the Bible says, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. The problem is here most of the times when God speaks and the person concluded that they are sinful. So it doesn't matter how much God speaks, you are too sinful to hear in your mind because the Bible says that the man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the mind that, the, when, when you hear that word, he's saying the thought that you have concluded over. There are thoughts in your mind that you made conclusions over. That you told yourself, ha, ah, I'm a son of a poor man. For us, we don't get rich. It's a conclusion in the spirit. It is a stronghold built and sealed. So, this thing stands against the blessing of the Lord. And listen, you think that the things that, bl that block men from the blessing are, are very big things. Eh? You think generational curses? Nonsense. Whoever sins shall die and you have nothing. Like What Water doesn't cure, cure witchcraft. Are you getting what I'm saying? But when a person, for example, and the pastors contribute, the pastor tells you, I see a man who bewitched you. And the man receives it. You receive it. Have you seen those prophets? Eh? Like some of you come to me and I want to slap you. Like someone tells you, praise the Lord Jesus. Someone tells you, I see somebody who bewitched you. And the prophet tells you, and this is your aunt. Huh? And the prophet stops there. That's not prophecy, that's witchcraft. Because witchcraft is up to the intent that confusion is created. There's no prophet that prophesies truly and doesn't give word of wisdom. Prophecy comes with word of knowledge, comes with exhaustion and word of wisdom. Word of wisdom is the last word. Word of wisdom is that I should tell you, I, God is showing me this, God is showing me this, but God is saying that you should do this. When a prophecy doesn't conclude with that, it's a wrong prophecy. Some of you don't know. Someone comes and tells you, I see someone bewitching you. Uh -huh. Is that God speaking? Yes. Now, how can God come to gossip? The God comes and tells you, Iwe. God left his throne and he came to tell you someone is bewitching you and go back. There's not listen, even when God comes to tell you you are sinful, he comes with solution. God is not a news anchor. Then God goes back. If God really comes with a word, he gives you solution. Yes, God can show you someone bewitching you. But God does not read news. When God tells you this one is bewitching you, he will tell you how to overcome the witchcraft. And some of you should learn this. The like prophet will come and call you and say, I see there is confusion in your family. So what? And sometimes they are accurate. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes they are accurate. I see your mother, her name is this. Yes, but don't you know that the devil sees in the spirit? Because there is something that is hidden from the devil. Everything else is manifest. One thing is not the wisdom of God. 
the Bible says, had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. The, the Bible says, we minister to men in the wisdom, which is not the wisdom of this world, which cometh to nothing. The devil operates by the wisdom of this world. It cannot beat divine wisdom. And he cannot even unveil the mysteries. That's why he, he cannot unveil divine wisdom. So the devil can tell you, I see this, I see this, because he can see present in the spirit. <laughs> but future is a mystery in the spirit. It can only be seen with those who have the eyes that have access codes. And so somebody comes and tells you, ah, isn't your name this? Yes. Isn't your number this? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, man of God. Yes, man of God. <laughs> Prophesy, Papa. And then after that, the guy leaves you like that. I have seen. <laughs> That's not God. Some of you should know. That's not God. God, the most important part of prophecy is not word of knowledge. No. Word of knowledge comes to tell you that the man speaking to you is not speaking his thoughts. That's the importance of word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is when I pull out something minute that you know I don't know and I tell you. You get what I'm saying? Have you guys seen me prophesying? You've seen me. I read an account number. Reading an account number is not a shock. No. I read an account number for you to know that I don't live with you. I don't know these things. But this is another mind working through me. But I can't stop there because the demon can know that. What is the work of monitoring spirit? What is the work of familiar spirit? Is there need to, to talk and learn how you speak? Have you seen men who go for deliverance service and then somebody falls on the ground? Eh? And then somebody asks you, who are you? <laughs> and the person begins to say, I am his grandfather. Wait. This is the spirit of a man in the village. It has left the man. The man is not dead. He's busy doing his work. But his spirit left him. The Bible says a body without the spirit is dead. And now, but the spirit left the man and it entered the boy. Now, first of all, this boy has two spirits as we talk. Two human spirits. Ah. Have you not known that that's a familiar spirit? Don't you remember that Samuel died? And Saul went to a sorcerer and said, Arise for me the spirit of Samuel. Yet the Bible says it is appointed for a man to die once and after judgment. It means if you cross the line of life, your spirit can't come back. No, some of you say, some of you who sleep eh, and you lost someone and he came into the dream and you say, My mom keeps coming to me. That's not your mother. That's a demon called Familia, which walked with her when she was alive. And it copied everything about her. It can talk like her. Demons are more technologists than human beings. Because human beings are not men that studied. Demons are students of technology. And they have lived on earth longer than most of us. All of us. They've been here for skillion, zillion years. Now, it comes, it can talk like you. There are spirits which can talk like you and walk like you. Laugh like you and cough like you. Because they have walked with you for seven years. 10 years. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Then somebody comes and tells you, uh, you know, I see. Every time, every time a man speaks, if there are true prophets, you will see these things. Three. One. In the prophecy, you will hear truth. You will hear love. You will hear purity and righteousness. A man will point you to love. Man, you get what I'm saying? Like in Bara, a guy came and he says, Papa, now uh, I am from, uh, he was coming from a certain church. You get it? And he said, in one-on-one, -on -one. And the guy said, uh, Papa, I have my problem. What's your problem? He says, there's a girl I want to marry. I'm like, all right. Then he said, her name is Juliet. I'm like, all right. So, where is Juliet? He said, he's married to a certain businessman. I'm like, and I paused, I looked at the guy, quick. You want to marry another man's wife? Yes, Papa, me, that's the one man I want. And I know God can do a miracle. I just wanted to slap the guy. This is someone's wife. And you, wanted to, you want to marry him? He said, yes. Wait, this is someone's wife? Yes, I know. Okay, you came to a prophet or you came to a witch? He said, but the other prophet in my church, he told me, as long as you want it, God will give it to you. I said, Gwei, prophecy is not selfish. Go to guys who want money. They will lie to you as witches. Because they are witches. They are Balaam spirits. They are spirits of transaction. But for us, freely have ye received, freely give ye. And when I don't give charge to the gospel, the Bible says, we don't put charge on the gospel so that we should not, should not take its power. 
when you make, when you put a charge on the gospel it has power it has it doesn't have power anymore but now when a man has not paid you you can tell him uh -uh, we don't do that nonsense that's nonsense but if a man has paid you the bible says the lender is a slave to the borrower that's why we don't charge for nothing we don't we don't charge for prophecy yet we prophesy deeper than those guys That's the first thing you should see. Then the next thing is, you shall see word of knowledge. But the devil also knows word of knowledge. But what the devil doesn't have is word of wisdom. Word of wisdom, it's when I give you direction according to the eternal wisdom of God. And every prophetic minister, if he has not reached that level, he doesn't qualify to prophesy. Because if you tell a person what you see, you will mess their life up if you don't give them direction. Because you know that all men are so fragile and gullible when it comes to the prophetic. I always see people. When you prophesy to them, they are willing to do anything. If you, even if you joke, God is speaking to them. Yes. You don't know how many people, if I, if I was that stupid, how many people would have coveted and stolen from? You get what I'm saying? I just need to call you and say, God said, send me that car. Yes. Some of you don't know. You're not in my place. You prophesy to a man and they become so fragile before you. Because prophecy makes people like that. They think everything you're saying, God is speaking. But if you tell them, go and withdraw every money, how do they steal from people? They just have to have a familiar spirit that sees. It's, they call the third eye in Hinduism. Just has to have the third eye. And he sees something beyond the normal realm. And then when he sees, isn't your name this? Yes. Isn't your grandfather this? Yes. Didn't you eat beans last night? Yes. Then after that, he says, God is saying, for you to be delivered, get me your car. Are you sure God is going to give you four? <laughs> have you not heard of the story? Okay, let me leave those things. Have you, understand, have you understood what to do? Have you understood? When a man doesn't show you the direction according to God's divine wisdom, it's a lie. Let's keep on going. For God speaks again and again, and man does not notice it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you get what I just said? So, now, God tells you, don't work with that brother. Don't work with that sister. Don't walk with this person. Don't walk with that person. Don't pick this call. Don't save this number. Don't, you get what I'm saying? But you are too deaf. And then he says, he speaks again and again and again, and you don't hear. Now, this is what God does. Because the reason why you don't hear is because of what I've told you. Those imaginary and all these things. And sometimes because of the, of the world, you have given yourself so much to the world and there's too much noise and you can't catch anything. You, don't even, and you are not even trained to, to pick up the voice of God when he has spoken. So the next thing he does in the next verse, in verse 15, he says, now, because you cannot hear when you are awake. Now the Bible says he comes in a dream. Now do you realize that dreams are mostly for the rebellious? Do you realize that God resorts to dreams because he spoke to you and you didn't hear in the day? I say, I repent. Mostly he comes in the night because during the day you didn't hear. When he speaks time and again and you cannot hear, he says, alright. Let me speak in a, in a dream. A vision of the night. And the Bible says, when in deep sleep falleth upon you. You see what he's trying to say? When deep sleep falleth upon you, what is he saying? When your carnal man, the sensual man, is switched off. Because that's the person that stops you from hearing God. Because it's Max Michael Schofield in your head. It's Z World in your head. Yes. And when I'm talking about the, I think I should teach you about the heart next Friday. Because if I don't teach you about the heart, some of you will not, will not hear God even though I teach you these things. Praise our Lord. So he talks to you when deep sleep. Because what he wants is for you to learn how to steal yourself. To stillation. That's what I'm talking about. Calming yourself down. For you, so you can hear him. But when your outer man is so loud. Food is speaking. Meanwhile, let me tell you something. Men who hear God. Let me say this. You can't hear God. If you eat 
if you eat like there's a problem. Like, like there are some of you who eat. Eh? Praise the Lord. Like, like, they will, like, like they will imprison you if you don't finish. You're like those of you who eat like you're seeing food for the first time. At lunch time. At after, you eat lunch and after lunch. And pre-lunch, post-lunch. Then you eat post-dinner and, and, and pre-dinner. You also eat pre-supper and post-supper. Like, you, praise the Lord. And some brothers eat like that and they don't even add one kilogram. Listen, food is an enemy of, of these things. And you should know. At least here, sleep is not. But food is. Uh, let, me, let me say it again. You can't hear God if you eat a certain way. Does the Bible says glutton is, is sin? So these things will just stop here. Honestly, you must stem your eating habits. Honestly. Honestly. Child of God, the way you eat, praise the Lord. Like there are some of you, when you see food, you, you begin vibrating like, <laughs> my best friend has come. <laughs> Listen, you can't hear God like that. I promise you, you can't. Some things must change. Mm -hmm. Let me go on. Let me tell you again. Food. Food. He will speak. Don't you realize that Jeshurun was a good boy? Right? The Bible says when he ate, he kicked God. The Bible says when he he ate and was full. Because some of you eat to be full. So just when he ate and he was full, the Bible says he kicked God in his face. And some of you have kicked God three times. Blue, black, Jack Chan, Kwa. And God is like, eh, Ankobie. And I know some of you are very hungry already. <laughs> and as I'm speaking, they say, Papa, the day you finish, I will make an order. Like some of you, you've already ordered. Some of you food is at the reception. Let me teach and finish. <laughs> when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings. Did you get what I just said? You get? Now the first time he spoke to you when you were awake and you didn't hear. Now the second time, now he's still trying to speak. Now he comes in a vision. And some of you here, you also don't hear. You wake up sometimes and you say, ah, that's just a dream. You get it? That's just a dream. Eh? Or sometimes you get a dream and you'll be like, ah. sometimes you get a dream against the business that you're going to do. And you wake up and you release fire. To God, say, in the name of Jesus, this can't be God. Fear, fire. And God is like, you're burning me. And even after I heard it say, I refuse. It can't be God. God is like, it's me. You can't be you. Fire. The morning you call, sometimes you call your pastor and your pastor is a bit funny. He says, that's the spirit of poverty. Then you also release fire with your pastor to God. Because, <laughs> listen, he comes to you and most times, even here, most of you, like God gives you things. Me, if I was to tell you the truth, all the upgrades of the anointings upon my life, they have come in dreams most times. There's a day before dead bodies began to rise, I dreamt there's a, a petrol station in Barra. I dreamt that I met Kenneth E. Hagin. You get it? And he told me, let's go to the petrol station. I want to, I want to give you fuel. You get it? And I asked him, am I a car? He said, follow me. He came. I knelt down on a fuel pump and Kenneth E. Hagin came and he put numbers and he said, he did like this. I opened my mouth. He put the pump in my mouth. And do you realize when I woke up, I woke up smelling anointing oil. Next two days, a dead body rose on phone. Be careful. Because the greatest encounters I've seen, even the prophetic, it was a dream of the night. But for you, you don't, you notice and ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, wow, that can't be good. Why can't it be good? 
Ah, ah. That was just a mere dream. Okay. You will be there and you don't want to study the word. You don't want to grow in dream interpretation. You don't know how to differentiate the dream of 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 of, uh, of, uh, of, of thoughts and devilish and gods. You don't know. The multitude of business, the Bible says, brings dreams, right? Means you can think about a thing so much and you dream it. It's just because you thought you watched a movie and you thought you you, you found yourself flying like Batman. And you say, I see the Lord causing me to fly over nations. No. You're dreaming Batman. Praise the Lord. You find yourself tattooing your body in the spirit, in the, in the dream. And you say, what is God doing to me? The Bible says, he, my names are in his thumbs. So it means God has a tattoo of me. You watched Michael Schofield. But also there are dreams of the devil and there are dreams of the Lord. That's why you must grow in the word. Discernment comes by the word. Children of God. Discernment doesn't come as a gift imparted by the spirit. No. Discernment is a fruit of the word. So now when you also don't want to know about the dreams, this is what he does. God says now he opens the ears of men and he seals instruction. He doesn't seal his instruction. He seals your instruction, their instruction. Do you get what I just said? He opens their ears and he seals their instruction. What does he mean? Next verse. Let me show you what he means by their instruction. Next verse he says, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He seals their instruction that he should withdraw men from pride. You get what I'm saying? That he may withdraw men from man from his purpose. Did you see what I said? Purpose is going about that thing that you have purpose to do. You know when you make decisions and you did not consult God. He says, I'm going to do this business. And God wants to withdraw you from that business and hide you from your pride because pride comes before falling. So he's trying to stop you from falling and he wants to withdraw you from purpose because if he withdraws you from the purpose you, like those things you have decided to do without his consultation and his wisdom, you're walking by your own wisdom and he wants to stop you and he speaks and speaks and, speaks and you don't hear. And then he says, all right, let me do this. And when he does this, you don't listen. Then now the Bible says he opens your ears and he seals his instruction in your heart. Let me explain what this means. You wake up one day because now he spoke to you in a dream and you didn't hear. Now he came while well, well, deep sleep had fallen upon you and he opens your ears and he put an instruction in your heart. And this is, what, that's how, this is how you know this happened. God spoke to you the first time and you didn't hear. Then he came in a dream and you did not listen or hearken. Now you wake up in the morning and what you had chosen to do he took the moral. You get it? Like you are all, ah, I want to marry her, I want to marry her. Like you know, you are on an oven. And then God speaks to you like, don't do this. Then in the dream, you get a dream, God, some, you get a dream and this sister you wanted to marry is pushing you and you drown in water. And you be like, you wake up and say, devil, leave my wedding alone. In the name of Jesus. After you have prayed, you sleep. And you dream your sister night dancing. Your do, the, the sister you wanted to marry. You're like, you're like, what is happening? You wake up and you say, hello, hello. Have you ever night danced? This one says, fire. Okay, let us pray. The sister releases fire, you release fire also. Then you sleep. <laughs> you dream the sister coming and it tells you, I will eat you. And then you wake up, you're like, but this demon, this demon, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. And then now, God comes when you have refused. Because you don't, you're not intelligent in the spirit to differentiate and discern the dream from God and the dream that is not from God. Listen, when the, the, when, when, when the infamished cows ate the fat cows, wasn't it a dream? Wasn't it from God? If it were you dreaming that, you would say, devil, leave. Because a cow ate another cow, that can't be God. You don't know the meaning. Did you get what I just said? When Joseph took Jesus to Egypt, didn't he see, jo Jesus, didn't he see bloodshed in the dream? Yes. Now, you wake up in the morning and the other fire of love you had and the enthusiasm and the Egos to go and 
pay for the gown and do this. You wake up and your morale has gone down. She says, I wanted to do this business, but I feel, you get what I'm saying? It, but what happened? The God is telling you, don't do that, crusade, don't do that crusade and, and you say, you go and pay and you do this and you do this and then all of a sudden something causes your heart to faint within you. You feel, what, what is this? Because some things look obvious. They look obviously the will of God. Yet sometimes they are not. And then you wake up and something inside of you is saying, but I no longer feel like. That's what they call sealed instruction. It's a voice of God. It's the third to the ignorant, the rebellious, or the seared. That's the three levels that receive this kind of voicing. It's one, the one who is ignorant of the voice of God, or the one who hears and rebels, or the one whose conscience has been seared with a hot iron and no longer hears. The senses of the spirit are now down. So sometimes you have fire over something and God comes and when, are you getting what I'm saying? And God comes and takes the morale for that thing. Because a certain instruction of an eternal monarch has been sealed in your spirit. Did you get what I just said? When this thing has been sealed in your spirit, then you wake up and what you didn't want, you want. Or what you wanted, you don't want. And some of you now, I have caused trouble. Because some of you will conclude on that voice. No. Let me speak something. Every voice of God has seven laws that, go that govern it. It's called the seven guiding lights of the spirit. I will teach the, one, uh, them one day. But one of them, the most important is truth, the word. Did you get what I just said? Because the voice of God sometimes comes and it seems to go against the word. Don't you remember that the Bible says that it is of no contradiction that the greater blesses the lesser? You get what I'm saying? But don't you know that, it, that Jesus bowed to John the Baptist? And Jesus said, suffer it to be so for now. That some, most times the instruction comes and says, yeah, the word says this, but for now do this. You get it? But it, you must be sure. That's why you must be students of the word. You must be students of, you must. Because you will mess up yourself. You will mess up your life. Because some of you will make decisions on the voice of the enemy. Some of you will make decisions on a familiar spirit. Some of you will make decisions on a demon that just whispered to you because you cannot differentiate between the two. Somebody say hallelujah. And so when that thing is sealed in your spirit, that's what I call the sealed instruction. Somebody say the sealed instruction. And so you wake up and morale is taken or morale is rekindled or you wake up and grace is granted over a particular place or some certain doors are open and your eyes can see particular things. It's wisdom. That you look at these things and you understand. Somebody say hallelujah. Did this thing uh, did this thing, thing sink? Do you, know this, do you now understand this voice? Let's go to the third one, then I finish. The third one is what I call counsel. The counsel of God. The counsel of God. The counsel of God, it says in, in Proverbs, I don't know if it is 24 or something. It says, counsel in a man's heart is as deep waters, right? It says, but a man with understanding draws it out. It says, counsel in a man's heart is as deep waters. But a man with understanding does what? Draws it out. This, look at this and I explain to you. This voice of God is the voice of purpose. I'm going to finish with this one. This one, get from me that scripture. This voice of God is the voice of purpose. I think it is 20, 24, 5. Proverbs 24, 5. This is a voice of purpose. Let me explain it. Some of you have seen people in the world that are only smart when it comes to business. You get it? Or he's only smart when it comes to academia. You have seen people who are very, very brilliant and intelligent in classes when we were studying together. Yet when you got out of school, he had a distinction everywhere and he even had a first class. Yet when he got out of school, he's a failure in, in life. You get what I'm saying? He only excelled in class. But when he go to practical life, he can't handle business. He can't handle an office. He can't. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because the wisdom I'm talking about here is the voice of God. It's the voice of God. It says counsel in a heart of a man is like deep waters. But a man with understanding will draw it out. It means this is the voice of God that is sealed at birth. Did you get what I just said? It's wisdom that comes for the purpose of the man on earth. 
if a man always that's why you hear many men of God saying that a man standing in his call can't be wrong have you heard such statements that when a man is standing in his office of call he can't be wrong if a man was called to be a businessman he will never go wrong even when he errors there's a wisdom in that man's spirit that always corrects the errors he has done because when God was ordaining that man he sealed all the adequacy of wisdom and the voicings of God in that man's spirit. If that man learns and gets the understanding, he will always draw out. Here, it's not God speaking. Here, it's not God speaking. No. It's a man taking intelligence from the eternal rel realms that were hidden in his heart. Did you get what I just said? Let me ask you something. You remember the other time, this thing always works when a man is in a dilemma or in crossroad. When you don't know what to do. If you are standing right, this thing will, this voice will blow out. Listen, you remember the other time when, when Moses was at the Red Sea? You remember? Now, Moses is at the Red Sea and listen, there is Pharaoh behind and there's a Red Sea here. Practically speaking, this is a place of impossibility. You cannot say we're going to pass this way. But do you remember that when those guys made noise to him, why did you bring us here? We want melons. Why did you bring us here? Were there no graves in Egypt? You get what I'm saying? The Bible says, what did he say? The Bible says he told them, be still. And, and be still for the Egyptians, you see. You see? This kind of wisdom is a wisdom that can only, it's the voice of God that can only be accessed by men of meditation. Men who have learned stillness. Did you get what I just said? Men who have learned stillness. He told them, be still. Now, I want you to realize that the Bible says, be still and know. It doesn't say, be still and hear. Because this voice does not come to the spiritual ear. This voice comes to the spiritual receptacle. It's a Noah. It's a place of the spirit that is called a Noah. That's a place where you receive information and you find yourself knowing something which you don't know how you know, but you know that you know. You know that you know this thing, but you know this is not your thought. But you know, this thing just came, but it is up, it's, it's, it's supernormal intelligence. How do I know this? But you cannot tell how you know, but it just popped out and you realize this is not my thought. This is divine intelligence. It just came because a man has learned how to steal himself. The Bible doesn't say, be still and know. Be still and hear. No. When you steal yourself and you come and you listen from within, knowledge, counsel in a man's heart pops out. And it comes and it's reconciled in the judgments of your heart. And you can tell somebody advice which you don't know how you knew. That's the voice of God of the, of the third realm. Do you remember that they came to Jesus and they told him, we have caught this woman in adultery. Right? The law of Moses says, if you get a woman in adultery, stone her right away. Now, the Bible, are you guys following? The Bible says that God did not, Jesus did not come to abolish the law but he came to fulfill it it means there he cannot say stalk against Moses if he says don't kill the woman she has gone against Moses who he came to fulfill yet if he says kill the woman he has against, gone against the grace he came to bring so it means no is not an answer and yes is not an answer here and some of you have been in those places where you don't know where to go no is not an answer no is not the answer. Yes is not the answer. So Jesus was in that place where he can't say no. Because if he says no, don't kill her. She has gone against Moses. Yes, if he says yes, kill her. He has gone against the Christ and all. So if he says yes, he is wrong according to God. And if he says no, he is wrong. Because also if he says yes, kill her. People will say, but you said you came to save the, the sinners. Yet if he says no, don't kill her. You will say, but you said you came to fulfill Moses. So each, each answer here was wrong. You remember what he did? The Bible says he stooped down. Some of you think that he was writing on the... No. He was stealing his spirit. He was coming down to get... And all of a sudden when the, when the, when the knowledge stooped up in the spirit, he stood up and he says, one of you who is without sin. That was wisdom that he just drew out. That was not wisdom that he had. No. That was wisdom that came out of the fullness of that. Counsel in a man is as deep waters. But a man with understanding knows how to draw. The understanding here, the intelligence is stillation. Self-stealing. If you do not, have not learned this one, you will never understand it. You have not learned meditation. Where you go in a place 
and you don't want anything to speak apart from the inner man. That's not God speaking, no. That's the wisdom of God that he buried in your spirit long time ago. And that's the wisdom you're supposed to walk by, by the call of God. The call of God upon your life. Have you met women who know your children more than you know them? Or you have not? Like a woman looks at your child and says, that child is hungry. But he's saying, no, but I've just given her food. She says, that's hunger. I am her mother. The woman knows your child. Because that's her call. On, she's a mother by calling. And she has known how to draw out wisdom out of her spirit. Do you guys get the things I'm saying? You remember that they came to Jesus and they told him, Wama, this coin, should we give tax to Caesar? Again on that place, no was the wrong answer and yes was the wrong answer. And in one of the movies, if you guys watch those movies, one of the movies, there, there's a man who acted, the disciples said, don't answer, they are tricking you. Because they were always tricking him. And still, he had to first steal himself. And he says, what is the inscription? Some of you do not understand that that's the wisdom by which the cold man operates. Have you seen certain men who don't lack answers for any question? He knows how to respond to every question. You get what I'm saying? And if he speaks, you will realize, mm, guy knows everything. It's simply that the man is standing in his call and he knows how to draw out. Even that thing that he doesn't know how to draw out, he draws it out. Praise the Lord. And this one can only work if a man has learned stealing, steal himself. That one does not apply. It's the voice of God that is ever available. And especially to those of you, what should I do? Which business should I do? You get what I'm saying? You're seeking the counsel of God from another man. Kumbe. <laughs> God has buried these things in you. And another man who will aid you, he will simply look in your spirit. He uses the, th the wisdom in your spirit to prophesy to you. Some of you pay them consultants. Some of, you, some of them speak to you according to zodiac Scientology. Have you seen those things? I am Capricorn. I am nonsense. It's, it's, it's witchcraft. You read the book of Enoch. You realize that Zodiac Scientology is astrological soothsaying. I was, not going to, I was going to say necromancing, but soothsaying. It's witchcraft. But mostly, when you ask what should I do, the man simply looks into your spirit. If he has learned how to see beyond the normal, he simply looks into your spirit and draws out waters and gives them to you. You, you, you get what I'm saying? And you pay <laughs> because you couldn't draw. That's why understanding is costly. Understanding is costly. Let me ask you, do you realize that certain men receive Christ and they reject his principles? Yet other men reject Christ and they receive his principles. And when you look at them, the men who received the principles and rejected the Lord are prospering above them who received the Lord and rejected principles. Who told Elon Musk you can buy Mars? Do you know that Elon Musk's company, one of his companies is called the Boring Company. Yet they told you there's a mystery in naming. <laughs> a mystery in naming. How many of you are in secondary school those days when, when, when Bruno Mars sang a song that hit the whole world and it was called the boring song? You remember? The, day, the lazy song. The day I don't feel like doing it. And he had monkeys in the video. Because it doesn't matter what you call something. If he had understood that wisdom, you will seek for him. It doesn't matter how he's dressed. You will seek for him. If Do you get what I'm saying? There are certain men who stand before people and they abuse them. And people pay. I don't know if you understand. Do you get what I'm saying? And some of you don't understand this thing. Listen, there are men who come. Who come you, you, you read about the, the greatest billionaires. They are tithers. They don't receive Christ. They have rejected him. They will even go to hell. But they do principles a certain way. They don't tithe to God, but they tithe. If you read about the greatest billionaires, have you not read about something called the pledge? Where they gather to give. Have you not read that Bill Gates give 
40% of his income every month. But he doesn't have Christ. But there is a Christian who has Christ and speaks in tongues and then give even 1%. And Bill gets rules over him. Why? Because the Bible says the rich shall rule over the poor, whether Christian or non-Christian. Now, Bill received, rejected Christ and received his principles. You get what I'm saying? When you look at their lives, they look like they read the word. But they rejected the Lord. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, did you get it? These men have all... Do you know that in all the religions of the world, there's one thing that we all have in common? The lesson of meditation. Everybody teaches it. Teaches it. Hinduism teaches it. Shitu whites teach it. Christians teach it. Buddhists teach it. Even when you look at Buddha, his his thing is a meditational thing. He was seated like this. It's meditation. Men who get the third eye, meditation. It's learning how to steal yourself. I saw there's a guy called Karim who is now teaching professional meditation. And people are teaching. You see his views on YouTube, 10 million. He's teaching professional meditation. And he's just teaching you how to contact demons. But see, <laughs> when Moses died, and it was time for the guy to sit in his shoes, they were too big. Joshua was afraid. About 17 times, God told him, do not be afraid. Be courageous. And the guy couldn't get it. And now God came to him and told him, upon this book of the law shall he meditate. When the guy got that one, he took, he began to stop the sun. Who told Joshua you can stop the sun? Wisdom comes out. It's the voice of God that was buried therein. Do you get what I'm saying? For jo Moses, it was 24 hours of raising the rod. For Joshua, he told priests, step in the water. It parted. The Red Sea, some of you think when Moses did like this, it parted. No, it took about 24 hours because the Bible says it took the northeaster and the southeaster. Wind had to come and it blows about zero degrees to freeze and ice up the water. That took about 24 hours. Yes. But what did, how, how long did it take Joshua to, to part the Jordan? The priests stepped in the water and the water parted. It didn't have to ice up. The, the water just parted. I am saying the man learned technology of drawing out. Do you get what I'm saying? And if you don't learn these things, <laughs> you'll be funny. You will you live a miserable life. No more. You can't be. There's nobody that has ever lived super normal and is not a meditator. Because counsel in a man is as deep water as a man with understanding only can draw it out. If you don't have the understanding, and mis meanwhile, the first level of understanding is when you learn to steal yourself. Those guys, those of you who don't have secret places, secret time, those of you who don't have time, like, 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 why would I leave my home and pay a hotel and lock myself there? Huh? Why? Why? Because you want a place. Like when I'm going to pray, I get there, I go to a hotel which has the highest levels. I go to the highest place because there noise can't find me. I lock myself up. Even when a, a car is passing, I can't hear. And I sit there. And when you're coming out, you come with a billion dollar idea. And when somebody comes and says, the Lord spoke to me. Yes, the Lord spoke to me, but this thing, it was not that the Lord was talk, talking at that point. No. This thing God sealed this thing God sealed when you were born. When you were made, he embedded it in your spirit. If you don't draw it out, you will live a normal life. If you get me saying amen, get to your feet. This message was brought to you by Apocalypsis Ministries International. You can follow us on our social media platforms on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Apocalypsis TLEG. Apocalypsis TLEG.